Meanwhile, the price of gold has been rising as shares fall and currencies tremble. It's seen as a safe place to put money in turbulent times. Now, that high price has encouraged mining companies to dig for gold in the most difficult of places. Our man on the road, Rob Pitham, has been to Omer in County Tyrone. It looks like any other quarry. They could be digging for coal here or slate or road stone, but in fact they're in search of a more precious metal, gold. High above the hills of Oma is Britain's only working gold mine. The gold that's being mined here crops up in rocks that are 450 million years old, known as Dalradian rocks. Now, the strata of rock actually stretches an awful long way, all the way from South Carolina in America, across the Atlantic, through here in Ireland, off to Scotland and Scandinavia. In fact, you can confidently say there really is gold in them are hills. But it's not as easy as it sounds. They've known for decades that there is gold in these parts. But it's only in the last few years that the high price of gold has made mining here economically viable. And even so, it can still be a struggle. The difficult thing for us is the analogy that people have for something that's very profitable. They say, oh, it must be a gold mine. The truth of it is that uh, it's a balancing act. We have 37 direct employees here, uh, plus a lot of contractors working on site as well. Uh, that's uh, a lot of incomes that the mouths that we have to feed. Uh, our diesel bill for running all the equipment you can see around here, uh, we're spending a, a great deal of money on, on diesel. So, of course, the, the falling oil price is another factor in our uh, profitability. I'm standing in the business end of the process now, right inside the gold seam itself. If you just look over there, where those rocks change colour from the brown around them, that's actually an intrusion that's bubbled up right from beneath the Earth's surface. It's actually rock that's made up of quartz and lead sulphide, and in there are tiny pieces of gold, enough to make this whole operation worthwhile. The ore is passed through giant crushers. It's then run through liquid, and high-pressure bubbles are passed through. The sulphides, including the valuable gold traces, stick to the side of the bubbles, although at this stage it's more like mud finger than gold finger. And this is the finished product. It's basically a big bag of minerals. In here we've got lead, silver, iron, and of course it's about 1% pure gold. In fact, out of this one ton bag, there's probably enough to make maybe 20 wedding rings at the most. But if I put my hand in here and just move it around in the light like this, you can see the gold bursting away. The bags are then sent to a smelting company in Canada to be turned into pure gold. The mine's not universally popular though. It took one of Northern Ireland's longest planning inquiries before quarrying could go ahead. The company insists it will restore the site and is sticking closely to its planning regulations. Mining here could last for decades if the gold vein is followed underground. The firm is looking at other reserves in the area too, which means its geologists are out prospecting for gold. We, we look at a lot of historical work um, and work that other companies have done and then work out where they've, they've maybe sampled and have come up with, with you know, anomalies in, in high places and then we'll kind of fill in the blanks. So we'll go out and we'll take more soil samples or more river samples, more sediment samples from that area just so that we can get a better picture. The company's name, Galantas, is Gaelic for elegant thing and the firm is using around 10% of its gold to produce its own range of jewellery. It seems strange that such beautiful objects can be formed from the mud, dust and rocks of this quarry. But the high price of gold on world markets means other mining companies are looking at the area too. And Northern Ireland's very own gold rush is gathering pace. Well, I know you like your bling, so I've got your present. Sent down from Rob. It's... What's that rubbish? Well, you like bling, so it's all for you. It's, 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 that's iron. That's not even a precious Well, metal. I thought it would be... Even in these we'll... days of rising commodity prices for you, this is cheap. Well, it is fool's gold. It is fool's I'll gold. tell you the difference. Yeah. You can always tell fool's gold because this is very hard and brittle. And actually, real gold, pure gold, is actually really soft. It's and crumbling. Manual. It's breaking off already. What tricks people, of course, is the sort of the reddishness around it, and that is probably some sort of iron oxide, but I'll stop talking. Now. I want to know more about your hair. Because, you know, given that you have the hair of a seven-year-old boy, there's a big change uh, in your life.